recorded. Ooh, here we go. All right. Episode six, starting in 77. 76. What the fuck did you just say? Oh, it's like, wait a second. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. What's up, guys? It's your man, Big Long 412. My guy, Brock Schaefer, is somewhere around. You cannot see his face, but he is here and, um, and like, uh, Matrix Spirit with us. You know what I mean? He's like fucking Agent Smith right now. He's all <laughs> over this place. And as you can see, our special guest today, Miss Rose, and you, you know what? Let's clear this up right now. First name before I butcher it, because we know I'm I'm the best at butchering names. So yeah. first name. I actually I actually am not bad with your name, but yep. I'm not gonna butcher you on camera first. So you go ahead and put it out there. It's Miss Shayla. I think that H at the end really throws people off. I feel like when people look at my name, they're like, what are those letters doing next to each other? But if you break it down, it's spelled in a way that you should be able to sound it out. Mish, a, la. All right. So, that's Mish, a, la, Rhodes. You know what I mean? That's her way of spelling it out, sounding it out. I'm going to give you motherfuckers the ebonic way that yeah. I had to sound that shit out. I looked and I was like, oh, Miss Shayla. She's Miss Shayla. Hi, Miss Shayla. Like it was a lady <laughs> named. Miss <laughs> Shayla, I was like, oh, Miss Shayla, there we go. It. Like, so there you go. So I actually told you guys, first time a name looked like I was going to fuck it up, I 100% was not going to fuck this name up because that's <laughs> sounding that shit out straight up hooked on phonics style. I put my own hyphen in there and I fucking figured that shit out. So, you know what I mean? So shout out to... Michelle Rose on the show today. She yeah. also is one of the competitors in our co-main event at High Rollers going down to Phoenix, Arizona, May 28th. Make sure you guys tune in. Come pull up if you can. As you see, she's getting her bong ready. She's uh she's she's active stoning. She's smoke yeah. training and repeating. I'm pretty sure I think she probably just came from training. So you training, know what I mean? Training and teaching in Alpine, and then this morning I was training oh, so I live right in the middle of everything. So like, here's our apartment and we go like Northwest and we get to Atos and then we go East and we get to where I work at Alpine Jiu Jitsu. So it's nice. a lot and a lot of training, but uh, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Well, shit. Uh, that basically, let me jump straight into my down first question. Um, pretty sure it's the question you always get when you do an interview. So I kind of. Don't I don't want to ask it the same way everybody asks it, but I'm kind of going to ask it the same way. So, Michelle, how did you get into jujitsu? <laughs> really by accident. I was like, you know, I was going through some shit where I, you know, I had been over medicated my entire life, and there was a point where I was just like, I mean, I was out of my fucking mind. I didn't know what was real, what was not. My depression, everything was just terrible, and my life was just terrible, and I had actually got offline and was just like trying to just keep my shit together. Like I should just join a gym. And I heard about a gym in Austin that was like right down the road for me. And I heard about it through uh, listening to like Joe Rogan. And I was like, I'm going to go check it out. I joined the gym. I had no idea that 10 planet had just uh, basically set up a base in Austin in this gym. And I walked in for my first like, workout you know class and they were like hey we need like another chicken here i'm like for what they're like jujitsu i'm like i've never done a martial art they're like that's okay i'm like i don't think <laughs> bell jujitsu I, I don't know if you want me to do this and they're like no it's totally fine get in here and i at the end of it i was like that was so weird but fun and i don't understand what that was but i should do it again and then i just kind of kept going back. And then all of a sudden I was addicted to it and my life just, my mental health started to improve, which as a result, my life started to improve. And then I just had a uh, drive and motivation in a way I had not experienced. I don't know if ever. Um, and 
honestly, fast forward a year later, if it wasn't for jujitsu, like, I don't think I would have had the balls to be like, I'm going to bounce out of Texas and go live in a year in the middle of rural Oregon where I don't know anybody, but because in this gym, I got an offer like, Hey, do you want to go to this cannabis farm? And there was a 10 planet like in that area. And I had already met those guys. And I was like, you know what? Fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> Kate, my dream of which I've been a pothead so much longer than I've done jujitsu. I've, I've been smoking weed since high school. And I mean, I've always wanted to get in the cannabis industry. I always wanted to go to a cannabis farm. And I truly believe there's like this magic in jujitsu that like in doing it, just that good fucking magic feeling that you create when you're doing it. It's like, that's some like energy that just like totally comes out and bleeds into your life. And that can bring, it just like shit just started changing for the better. And it's yeah. not like it didn't happen. But I handle the bad shit way better than I, way better started happening. More opportunity. I felt like I had more direction just overall. And like, man, it just, all these improvements. It's like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't I do this? And it's like the most fun, the most fucking fun you could ever have, especially when it's an open mat. And you get ripped with your homies and then you go and enroll and just like, maybe you micro a little bit. I don't know. It's whatever. I just mean mixing these things together is just like such a beautiful experience. And the fact that you can't just do it alone. You need other people to do jujitsu. We get to share with each other. And that's fucking special. That's fucking dope. So like, like you were saying how jujitsu can, um, impact and change everything on the outside of the mess for you and shit. Like, I really say, like, jujitsu had changed for me as far as, like, like me getting that, like, I got good and started fucking winning. But it changed for me as, like, I got an understanding, a better understanding of, like, oh, this is how you deal with shit. It was, like, once I realized, literally, a motherfucker at Mountain, man, I remember, there was a Mount, High Mount, in the Gi, hot as hell in human-ass Pittsburgh, Fucking D1 wrestlers everywhere. So, you know what I mean? So, fucking in the gi, motherfucking Mount got down. He pressuring. He, he got his, his his abdomen is just right here. Fucking gi right here. I'm like, man, get the fuck off me. Like, I'm about to tap. And I'm like, wait a minute. What the fuck am I about to tap for? Like, I all I got to do is, like, I literally just put my hands right here, like, lifted his belly up about half an inch. And turn my head, and I could breathe. And it was like at that point, I'm like, "Yo, when you comfortable being miserable, like this shit's easy." Yeah. Like it's like, "Oh, this shit's pretty easy." Like I'm comfortable in this bad situation right now. Like it's bad right now, but I'm gonna wait till this motherfucking shit tire itself out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my move and sweep this shit around. And you know what I mean? Make a change for the best. But like, like I definitely get what you're saying right there. Like shit definitely changed. For me, also on the outside, once it started changing on the inside, um, as far as like going to mass and jujitsu and shit. So, uh, like, like that leads me to the next one. Um, I was about to ask you. So, you were saying you've been applying here since high school. How long have you been doing jujitsu? Like, when did you start? Man, I started late. I'm a late bloomer. I found jujitsu like at the very tail end of me being 28 years old. I'm 36, so. I found this out and I just became addicted. And I was basically my mindset was, well, I'm just going to do this as hard as I can for as long as I can and just do as much as I can. And I mean, however high I reach is however high I reach, but I'm just going to like, you know, fuck it. I, the time is now. I felt like so much of my life was wasted being like crazy or mentally ill and over medicated and just. I don't know, a loser, degenerate, and just trying to figure my shit out. And I'm like, you know, in my late twenties, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with my life. And, and now like for the last six years, I've been in the cannabis industry since I got to California and, um, I've been doing jujitsu for seven years. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah. been like, you know, and then every year that I like get to, you know, I teach, uh, in Alpine, I get to teach kids and adults, and then I also am still in the cannabis industry. So it's kind of cool. I get to balance these things like in jujitsu, like people are always like, I want to have a gym one day. It's like really hard work. 
because we still also have to train and we compete. It is so like, and we don't get paid a lot and we don't, so we don't really do it for the money, but man, it is rewarding, but it's like, there's like, you have to fight through burnouts. Like you're burnout too bad. You have well, to yeah. still got to go train. And it's like, you know, I've never, like I always, I always say jujitsu is the loved and i've never worked so hard for something to the point where like fuck it i don't care if i'm burnt out i got it but having cannabis being back in the cannabis industry it kind of gives me a little like more of a balance where i feel like i get i can get excited again because it's not like it's taking a break but it's like let me put it to you this way teaching a child jujitsu who may not even want to listen to you or just like a room of children or standing in a dispensary talking to adults about cannabis. <laughs> so much easier to just talk to adults about cannabis. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Therapy, but as well. <laughs> like, I love THCV. It's my favorite cannabinoid. Like, I don't know. It's like, let me help you find whatever the fuck you want in here. Like, it's so much easier to like, so it's like a little bit of a break because teaching is fucking hard. But that shit is the most rewarding, like the coolest feeling, especially when I really like see them. Like I'll see these kids and go to some shit where I'm like, where'd you learn that? They're like, I don't know. I just thought if I did this and like, yeah, and look, I'm sick shit. That's like legit shit that I don't know. It's just like cool. Cause I know when they also came in at day one. And so it's like, you can yeah. do like, yeah. so, but it is, it's like to have a good balance of both. I mm-hmm. feel like, you no, know, I've always loved both. And the fact that like, you know, with high rollers, the moment I found out about high rollers, I was like, oh my God, these are my people. Like, cause everyone at high rollers is passionate about both, like insanely passionate about jujitsu and weed. And you guys are my people. Thank you. I'm happy we are your people and you are our people. <laughs> but uh, I, now, because I'm like excited and ADHD, so put me back on no, track. Ain't no doubt, ain't no. I don't believe in ADHD. That's just your superpower. <laughs> That's your superpower. You got hone that shit in. Then you know what I mean. That's all it is. But uh, yeah, no, I was gonna ask you. So, what's it like? Like, how's the environment? And and just, could you give it like a um? What's it like for uh? openly like stoner training at like at, at HQ at Atos HQ because you know from the outside looking in sometimes you think everybody there is super serious there ain't no goddamn weed smoking it's just straight pujada all you know what I mean like all day is, so, you know what I mean it's definitely pujada I am very I um I'm passionate about cannabis I'm in the cannabis industry I am very respectful of my coach. I know he, you know, he feels a type of way about it. I don't know if he just doesn't, you know, he just feels how he feels. I don't want to be disrespectful because I love my coach. Andre is amazing. So I never like to go into training at Atos. Like I'm never loud. If, if I've medicated, like it's very middle, it's like, you know, not at the gym, not on Mm -hmm. the side. I know how my coach feels about it. And I have such a respect for just my teammates, my team, my professor, and the because it is pohada every fucking class, every day. Like even the recreationalists, like there's no restaurants. Like you go to a 9 a.m. geek class and you're like, oh my fucking God. Like it's insane. So uh uh I just try to be like respectful about it, but you know, I'm still who I am and you know, yeah. I sit there and work my ass off and I'm respectful. I have a good attitude and I, you know, I get after it. I really love, oh my God, dude, I love training there. It's so much fucking fun. Like I'm going to this geek comp class and, you know, I used to be only no geek. So this has been, you know, quite a transition, but holy shit, this shit is a fun new adventure. This is a great, like, this has been like so exciting for me because at first I had like mad anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get fucked up by blue belts. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> in, the, in the country man and uh and you know what 
I got to get fucked up. I got to learn. And there's no other way than going through it. And I'm like in the best place too. So I just try to be as respectful as possible, but I'm still, you know, me. You so still I, you. You still I still you. Just, so I keep it separate, but I make sure to, when I go in there, no one's going to be like Rhodes came in. It was like a lazy pot. No, I'm going to work fucking hard. And you know, if I'm kind of dying, I'm still doing my best. That's for sure. What wake I up or just like n- didn't get good sleep, whatever the case may be, I'm always going to like do my best when I'm in there. I hear you. I hear you. It's funny because like I go in high and I'm like, at, like at first I would never go in like smelling like it. I had like different geese and shit. I'd be like, oh, geez, <laughs> let me change my gee real quick before I go in here. And then I, um, so then I like go in there, you know what I mean? I'd be high or whatever. And then uh, I remember it got to the point where it was like everyone, I, I didn't know how many other people was like doing it, but they were all doing it. And then they would kind of ask me like, man, why don't you never like, I'm like, I'm like, shit, I thought it was like some honor code and shit. Like I could come in here, like smell my professor was like, nah, man, like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know what I mean? I would start. I would I would do do my thing a little bit like closer or whatever, but still, it's just something in me. Even me, I'd be like, ah, let me change this shirt. Let me, you know what I mean? Let me throw my other shit on real quick or whatever. And then it was funny because I noticed like everybody got to the point of like, oh, Lonnie's the high roller and he's always had it. And a couple times I come in and be like, man, it's um, you know what I mean? It's it's a little strong in here, strong in here. And everybody, I can hear people be like, Oh, Lonnie's here, Lonnie's here, or whatever. And then be like, I'm really there. I'm like, that's not fucking me. It's actually not me. It's like, <laughs> so I'm like, yo, it's like, not me. I'm like, it's not me. So my favorite day was one day I'm in the bathroom, uh, uh get ready to uh get ready to go out on the mat. So run in the bathroom, change, wash my hands and all that, and uh go in the stall. I hear the kid, the kids are coming in, kids classes thing. Kids are coming in. <laughs> one of the fucking kids come in and he comes right in and he's like oh man it smells like Mr. Lonnie's in here I was like <laughs> yeah I'm like wait but it wasn't me I'm like what the f-? I'm like yo y'all are all framing me now like everybody's blowing it down and then when they say like it smells like weed motherfuckers just like yo that's Lonnie like, like, sure I got you like no, yeah. no I swear it wasn't me sure wasn't Exactly. Now it's to the point like I can say it's not me. My wife's gonna be like, yeah, 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 whatever, buddy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But all right, so now, slow down with Shayla here. What we're about to do now, which is awesome because you're already kind of ready, we're about to stop, we're about to relax, and we're gonna take a bong break. Yeah. Let me load another bowl. I'll just keep yeah. smoking. Probably. There I you just, go. I want you. So I got to get you one of my long wicks because I'll only smoke with the hemp wig. That is it. That dude, is it. I got it. I was actually just telling my boyfriend, I was like, we got to get back. There was a point yeah. where we were with the hemp wig, and now we are degenerates once again. Like, Listen, I got you. I'm, I'm going to make sure I got uh, brain to it. <laughs> Funny, funny story. Um, I had a fight to win match. It was my first fight to win match with Adi. Gone, and of course, you know, celebrate. Went in the parking lot. We shared a smoke. And I'm like brand new to Otto. So like I come in, I kind of see Andre and I like duck and I go around to it and I like go up to him. <laughs> hey man, come here, hug me. I'm like, do I smell like weed? Because I want to go up to my coach and I want to hug them, but I don't up and hug him. I smell like weed because I want to be respectful because I just got to him and I'm not trying to, you know, I was like, like so conscious of him. Like, this is a different, I respect these people. I don't want them to think that I'm like, you know, I yeah, like, yeah. Him up, but I fucking swear I am here. Away. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to show up on time. It's like, um, I'm not a lazy fucking stoner. Yeah. I'm having, I'm, having, I'm having the one issue. I'm having the one issue no stoner wants to have. I got everything except a lighter. <gasps> so give me two seconds. I'm going to yeah. get a lighter. Come back. And we're going to hit these bongs. Yes. Bong break. Hey, Brock, you still listening? Say something interesting, fucker.
<laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, just do it, just like I said, do it, doing the producing behind the scenes. So, uh, how was uh, how was moving from Austin, Texas to California? Was yeah. like the weed quality going from being a stoner in Texas to being a stoner in Cali? So, like, because I, I will say, if you're gonna get good weed in Texas, Austin is the place to be. That that's got the best weed. And, uh, but, you know, I had been to Colorado and then I had been to Oregon, but once I got down to California, I was, I was like, it was, this is the best weed I've ever smoked. And I have, I'm right now, I just also want to shout out, this is what I'm smoking on right now. These guys are fucking amazing. No till Kings. They use living soil. And, uh, this is some of the best flour I've ever smoked. So I'm just going to keep smoking on that, but. The quality just, there's, you know, I went to Amsterdam in uh, 2016 and I was able to, train. they even said California, they were, they told me California has the best weed. I'm like, better than here? They're like, oh, for sure. You know, I didn't know because I'm like a redneck from Texas. I was just like, I'm in Amsterdam and doing jujitsu and smoking weed on the street, listening to Sam cook. This is great. And so, uh, you know, I would have had never, I would have never known. So I always made a mental note of that. So when I moved here, I was like, you know, I just wanted to like cry. I was like, I did it. I'm in like the best, and one of the one of the best places for jujitsu. And, um, what was yeah. like your first like big stoner thing you did in California? Like get high, go to beach, or like what was what was yeah. It? Uh, the bit one of the things I went to uh, before I moved to California, I was visiting LA, and I went with my friend Becky. She trained at HQ with Eddie, uh, and it was Eddie's like first ever like stand up show, like the first time he ever did stand up. It was like in 2017, and I go outside, smoke a joint. And uh, Michael Plaster was there. And it was so I, for us, like with all of the acts that were there, because there were all these different comedians there. And I was like, holy shit. Cause you know, I'm from Texas. I had, I was just coming out to do jujitsu. I didn't know, like, I didn't like, yeah, definitely weed, but it was like this moment we were laughing so hard. Like, this is fucking awesome. I'm like, wouldn't it be crazy if I moved here? And then three months later, uh, because very shortly after I came back to, to Texas, I got that offer for the farm and I left and that was three months on the farm. And then I was in L.A. And then after a year in L.A., I was like, fuck living here. No offense. This part of it, uh, it, I, I came to San Diego and I, I felt more at home because. A lot of people have said it's Austin with the beach and that's not wrong. Uh, so I felt like, like, you know, it, it wasn't as like chaotic cause I'm already kind of like, eh. so if my environment's chaotic, I kind of feel chaotic. It felt a lot, uh, more chill here in San Diego. So I moved down here. I trained, uh, with the freaks for two and a half years and then, I mean, I just kind of started really wanting to do more gi and my boyfriend trains at Atos and I was cross training and it, the schedule and everything just, you know, it was like the, one of the hardest things leaving 10th planet. Cause I still have mad love for 10th planet. That's like, you know, my base of my no gi. And that's like really cool. Cause it gave me a super unorthodox funky style. And, um, but I, I also love training at Atos and, uh, you know, I'm making the switch has been like really great for my game. I, especially like training in the geese helped my no gi a lot. So, you know, the transition was like kind of crazy because I never thought I left at 30 years old. I waited till 30 years old to leave home and chase my dreams and go live in a yurt on a cannabis farm. And every day I was like with one of these huge plants, like growing into my yurt. So I smelled it every day. I woke up my dogs with me and I'm just like, wow. I fucking, I fucking did it. Like I'm doing the thing I really wanted to do. And I don't know. I just kind of went for it. So, uh, you know, especially if you're still young, I encourage any, you're in your twenties and you get like a random opportunity to go to a farm. I mean, I know it sounds reckless, but like fucking do it. Just do it. Just, I mean, if you get an opportunity to go travel, to, to do anything, like 
just do it. Like, cause I go for that shit. It's it's like you never know it might actually work out. And like my mom even said, "Wow, being a pie had like really worked out for you." God, is that like ready? You just sue and weed, so it's a relief. Oh, bong time! We did bong it. Break. Bong break. This is king. Cookies and cream, number two. Oh, yeah. All right, now. <clears throat> Next question is, tell us uh, a little bit about you know what I mean? Winning pans, worlds, like, you know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of people may not understand like the actual work that goes into that shit as far as training camps, fighting injuries, training partners, um, you know, the whole nine that goes into it. And then actually getting there and making it through. Cause let's not shit. Think about it, man. You go do all this hard work to get to a tournament. And your ass can be out in the first round. And it's just like, man, fuck, I didn't even, you know what I mean? Like, God damn, I didn't even do nothing. So. Done. One, it's like you you miss weight by point anything out. You, you're out. That's you're out. You get dude, you're out. And it's like, <laughs> it's all like, <clears throat> you got to, and especially, you know, depending on what belt uh, you're at, there's different rules. So like, you know, coming from, a more 10 planet background, I had to learn. I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn the IBJJF rules and I'm just going to have to train for it. And so Atos had these Nogi World training camps and I was able to join in on the 2019 ADCC training camp. And that's when I met Andre. And that's when I started training there because my boyfriend was training there and he was like, I, and I wanted to go, but I just, I don't know. I just didn't figure. And then he was like, hey, come with me. I'm going to go with was going with Dean Lister. He's like, I'm going to go with him on like a Tuesday, just join in. <clears throat> and I showed up with uh, my boyfriend, Jeff and Dean Lister. And then one of my girlfriends was like, oh yeah, she's cool. And they hooked me up with like a really uh, like decent, like drop in fee. So I was like, oh shit, I'll come here like three times a week. And I didn't understand, like, I was in this ADCC training camp, and I met the Rotolos. There were 16 blue belts. I had, And then when I was at ADCC and Ty comes out, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I had no idea. <laughs> but those camps got me <clears throat> to feel good and, uh, you know, comfortable in these also different rule sets. And then they have very, uh, the way Andre structures the camps, it's very specific. Like, if it's for ADCC, it's we're doing everything specific to ADCC, if it's for anything IBJJF, we're doing, and, and it's, <clears throat> it's so much because we do like some technique, but then a bunch of positional and then a bunch of different types of rounds, but he has it so well structured over like a long period of time. It's like such great work. It's, you just feel like super prepared going. In. And so, yeah. uh, and I was already like doing uh, a bunch of the, comp classes there and I just uh I I just felt like so like I was like I'm gonna get this shit and I uh, I was so stoked to like get gold because at, at the time I was also still 10 planet and I felt like you know as a as someone in 10 planet I was like I got IBJJF gold like I played the game and I won and I got it with the submission I was like so stoked you know uh, yeah. and then um 2021 my first Nogi Worlds with Atos and I make like a really stupid technical error and it cost me the match by like a couple points, but you know, one done. And I had been working so, and I had just gotten gold that year. So I was like, fuck. So I had a whole year to like, you know, and I did a lot in that year leading up to that too. But I was like, really, really like determined and focused. Like I'm going to get, gold. I'm going to fucking do everything I need to. And then, so leading up to Nogi Worlds, I notice a lot of my black belt like teammates, they will like, like we were like going to our hotel rooms, like, all right, bye. I'm gonna go study my opponents. It's like, what? 
It's like, oh shit, why not? So I always feel like, you know, I always feel better, more confident when I go in with a plan. So, you know, if I can go in with a plan, like, why not? Why don't I just let, so I look up my bracket. I look up all the chicks. I, I write them down in order of their rank. And if they have any videos on flow on Instagram, on you, I just look up everything and just try to see what their records are, like how they do in no gi, do they do more gi? Like just took notes on what they go for, what they usually win with or what they lose with. Like I needed to know like, what, how am I going to need to play if I go against any of these chicks? Cause I could go against any of them. And it was so great because the one that I couldn't find anything on, we get there and my boyfriend, he sees it happening. He's like, this is what she's going to go for. And this is what she's going to do. So this is what you're going to do. And I'm like, bet. And I, it, like, I was so stoked to win that first match. And then the second match, this was like strong, Brazilian, tough. And like, when I saw her, I was like, oh shit, I'm going to. And when I, when I was studying her, I was like, I bet I'm going to go against her. Cause she's like the toughest one. So I, I knew I had to like play a really strong, like really, really mm-hmm. strong. And I swear to you, cause she was strong. I tried to pull her in my guard and she was just like, boop, boop, boop. And I was like, okay. It's like, <laughs> and I was like, I just like, she, but <laughs> was, she was winning with a lot of guillotine. So I was like, I just need to wrestle up and just get the body lock and just get the points. And so we did that <clears throat> but we were out of bounds. They reset us in the middle, like, not like that at all. I was like, okay. Like, I was so like, like, I'm going to do it again. And I did it again. She had like, you know, if, if you don't free your head, you don't get the points. And I'm like, I am like aware of that. I'm like, I'm going to, like she had a strong grip and she was trying to hold on to it. And I was like, I'm going to free my fucking head. I'm going to get these fucking points. Like I'm not getting silver this year. And I freed my head with like two seconds to spare. And I was like, I did it. Like it was like the best. Because man, the, I, I made a, I made some mis- dumb mistakes. Like I know what, why I lost my match, my first match in 21. And it was like, you know, I love that the fact that in jujitsu, my failures don't break me or, or like devastate me. They, they like motivate me. It's like mm-hmm. no, losing is not like, a, <laughs> it's like really good if you're open to growth and all of that, which I am. So, you know, in, in a world where like, you know, where, where is that? Like, when does that happen? Where losing is like, but I guess like in anything you should always look at failure as like, you know, a positive thing. And I feel like jujitsu teaches me to accept failure. (laughs) Well, the one thing I can say is like that whole, like losing is learning thing. Jujitsu is the one place where losing, you definitely learn. Like, cause you can go back, watch and get better, capitalize and all that, you know what I mean? And really learn. Now on the other side of that shit, Fuck that shit in combat sports. Like when you throw punches <laughs> and shit, man. People were like losing, you learn. No, fuck that. No, I did not want to lose. I did not want to lose. You know what I learned? I learned that I really didn't want to lose now. Like <laughs> that's what I learned. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, you can I still go. I want a gold this year and I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? Jiu-Jitsu, you definitely can fucking learn. Definitely learn. And that was like. One of the um one of the key examples right there, you said you fucking lost, boom. You went back, studied everything, you did the film study, you went back to fucking you you went back to the drawing board, developed all this new shit, what you needed to do, came back, got the fucking job done. And you and you had one wild card in there that you didn't know what was gonna happen with. You still got the I job. Done. My boyfriend, and that was like by chance that he ended up just He's like, oh, that's her. And he watched that match. I was in the warm-up area and he was just texting. And I was just like, the universe is in my favor. And then my favorite number is 11. And I was mad 11. I'm like, oh, it's on, baby. It's ha- it's fucking happening. <laughs> but that's you know, right. It's like, even if things don't line up, though, you really do have to just believe in yourself. Because I've had to go out. When I won OV Pants, I didn't have anyone in my corner. And I, I was still like, well, what are you going to do? Not go out there and try to win? 
no, I'm going to still go out there. So I feel like it's, it's like, uh, I feel confident in myself, like to go out there and do my best, no matter what, whether I'm sick, yeah. whether, you know, dealing with personal stuff or, uh, I don't know, you know, just like anything really. It's like, whether there's a coach there or not, but you know, I usually do have a coach. I, I feel like fairly fortunate. My boyfriend's usually, he's a, he's a great quarter. And, <clears throat> and at this point I can pick up his voice like super easy. So yeah. Uh, Shout out to all the dope coaches and let's take one second. Go ahead. T- say the boyfriend's name out loud. Let them know who, who we shouting out right now. Let them know who all the praise is going to. Jeff Real, that's my man. He is amazing. He is a third degree black belt. He got his third degree from Andre. And um, yeah, he has been one of the best influences on my jujitsu and in my life. And I'm really like, you know, he is a, the reason I actually am coaching kids. I was... He offered me that as a blue belt, and I said no. And after I got my purple yeah. belt, I both said no. And he's like, just do it. And he's really fucking good at it. And it's an almost intimidating. So thank God he did believe in me and push me because it took a year to get like comfortable. Cause I was just like, there would be days I go in my car and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. Like, but you know. <laughs> That's super fire because kids are fucking nuts, man. Shit. Yeah. They are crazy. Because I'm like, man, this is so much fun. Because I'm like, all right, circle up. And then they do. And I'm like, oh. Because <laughs> sometimes with the kids, I'm like, kids, ah, please. It's taking like three minutes to do this. I want to show mm-hmm. you. You know, <laughs> I tell adults, don't do that. Stop doing that. Don't touch that. Don't take your fingers out of your mouth. Like, I don't have to do that. They'll just, and then you show the moves and then they do the moves and then you help them if they don't know. And then they ask you questions and they're great questions. And it's like, you know, it's kind of like. Fucking kids. (laughs) The teens is fun because you kind of get to show them like cooler, like the kids, it's very, very basic fundamentals. The kids, the teenagers, older kids, you can kind of like, show them like cooler shit so that's like fun but it's still like you know shit i still do kids jujitsu that's all i got so yeah. if you ever do jujitsu with me and i beat you just know that i beat you with kids jujitsu y'all because i am mr basics what <laughs> that shit <laughs> no, fundamentals don't lie they don't man they don't and uh shit uh it's crazy when we go from kids to this <laughs> but um um how actually did you, you know what I mean, like your first time hearing about high rollers and then right after that, you know what I mean, definitely go ahead and let us know what's up with, uh, you know what I mean, the 28th match against Mercedes. Yeah. It's going down, it's going to be a fucking dope-ass match. Co-main event at high rollers. Uh, don't let that fool you guys. It's very easily could have been the main event. Very yeah. fucking easily because it's going to be fire. But uh yeah, go ahead. Let us know how you found out about high rollers and then how we got where we are now. Yeah. Um, I feel like I had moved to LA already and I I guess it was a post with uh Glover and Eddie next to him, the famously circulated video, and he's smoking and doing jujitsu. And I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> you know, I was like, is this a real thing that like people can do? And I was just like, oh man, like this would be fucking fun. And so I tried to do it in 2019, but it was like, I was sick as fuck. I went kind of late and it just like, it was a disaster. This chick was just like in my guard, like pressing her head into me. And I was like, oh no, I'm so not okay. And I felt (laughs) like, like I was like fighting something because I had been competing and cutting and I just got fucking sick and I was like I'm still gonna do it I probably shouldn't have been there but I was there <laughs> and I I felt like I didn't get to display good jujitsu at all but I was also still a blue belt I've come really far since then so uh the fact that like I can do a super fight with something that I like when I first found out about it I was like genius like like how awesome would it be to do this and I had a couple girlfriends that have done it and I've gone and supported them and it's just like kind of cool that it all like, you know, 
after like seven years of like hard work, I get to finally like do a high rollers event. So I'm just really stoked to be a part of it. Uh, Mercedes, uh, she and I are, uh, are friends. That's my girl. So it's nothing but love. I know we're going to go out there and put on a fucking show. Um, I was super, I, I accepted the match and I was like, Oh, and who is it? And they're like, Mercedes like, Oh shit. And she like <laughs> messaged me. It was like, it's all love girl. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm so because that's like the thing about cannabis. It like brings us all together. Jiu-jitsu brings us all together and like these uh two awesome things, you know. That's fucking dope as hell. So look, I ain't even gonna hold you up any much longer, guys. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. May 28th, Arizona is going down. Michelle Rose going up against Mercedes. It is going down. Um you don't want to miss this shit. It's going to be fire. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of fucking fun. Good ass time. Great weed. Amazing BJJ. All oh, did you just... Go- Wait, hold on. You know what? You're right. Hold on. Yeah, we ain't yeah. out of here. We ain't leaving just yet. Hold on, hold on. Let me get him. Yeah. We, can- we can't leave like that. The fuck? I'm a goddamn people stoner. Now I only did one bong rip. I'm folding in this motherfucker. Shit. I'm looking like the, the, the most non-high roller ever right now, man. <laughs> I, I apologize. I apologize. Let me go ahead and fill this thing on up now. Let me see. I'm going to try to fill this up. I'm going to try to clear this in one motherfucking way. I don't know. This spot. Damn, I'm like, if I pass out, just end the podcast for me saying something cool as shit. Don't worry about me. Just, you know, I'm gonna make sure you wrap this shit up the right way. Oh, I got it's only if I pass out, okay? That's yeah, what I'm yeah. talking about. You guys see? That's what jujitsu does. It has us ready that we got each other's back no matter what. Never, Never <laughs> doubt. Out. Yeah. Never ever have I ever had so much fun on a podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing spots. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> like Russian Israeli, I move a lot and uh, with my hands. I don't know. It's just part of who I am. That's awesome. Be who you are. That person is fucking amazing. Thank that person so much for doing this podcast. Thank I you cannot so wait. To actually, we get to actually smoke one together in person. Yes, I'm so excited. That's gonna be fucking awesome. And you can show me some goddamn jujitsu because yeah. I used to be really good at this shit. <laughs> Man, I suck now. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just fucking suck now. Oh, and that's like jujitsu. Sometimes you're the hammer. Sometimes you're the nail. Sometimes you're the wall. The nail is being hammered too. That is jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm definitely the one that's just getting, just not doing good. Yeah. <laughs> that's me. That's me. Bro, that's like when you're getting better. It's just fucking with you because it's like I'm, I'm eating shit, but really I. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, before we get out of here, though, make sure you shout out the gym. Let everybody know where they can find you on all the social media platforms. Shout out the coaches. Definitely shout out the boyfriend one more time. Make sure he get all the love he deserves. You know what I mean? So go ahead, do your thing. Yeah, shout out to my boyfriend, Jeff Real. He is amazing. Shout out to my coaches, everybody at Autos, my coach, Andre. He's amazing as well. Um, I'm high, so I guess everything's amazing. <laughs> Definitely shout out to, uh, <laughs> to my bosses at Trust Tree, uh, Kevin and Gabe. Uh, I uh, was black market for three years. I'm back in the white, and they are amazing. Or so, my social media is Rhodes Head BJJ. That's R H O D E S H E A D BJJ Instagram and. Uh, yeah, don't even worry about Facebook. I'm like barely on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got you, got you. All right, guys, there we go. So 
Shout out to Michelle Rose. See you guys on the 28th. I'm Big Lon. That's Brock's letter up there. That's Michelle. We out. <laughs> Brock, we good?